I am continuing to work through the 2015 AP Physics 1 free response questions. This is a practice test you can find online. I just wanted to work through it and see what it's like. I've never done AP Physics, so there's that. Uh, I've already gone over the equation sheet. I went over all these equations that comes with the test. I did problems one and two. Now I am on problem number three. I haven't really looked at this, so let's just get to it. Uh, it's a little small, but I don't want to zoom in and zoom out, so I'll just read it to you. A block initially at position x equals zero, I assume that's that right there, no, it's right there, and in contact with an uncompressed spring of negligible mass, that's the spring, uh, the block is pushed back along a frictionless surface to x equals negative d, so right there. So it's pushed back that way. As shown above, compressing the spring by amount delta x equals d. The block is then released at x equals zero. The block enters a rough part of the track and eventually comes to rest at x equals 3d. The coefficient of kinetic friction between the block and the track is mu, rough track. On the axis below, sketch and label graph for the following two quantities as a function of position of the block between x equals negative d and 3d. Uh, you do not need to calculate the values for the vertical axis, but the same scale should be used. Okay, the kinetic energy of the block. So, as I release this, um, we can think about this in terms of work. The spring's going to do work on the block and increases kinetic energy to some value up here. Uh, and then the block's going to stop over here, so it has zero kinetic energy too. So it eventually has to die down. Um, now, the amount of work done is F, let's see, so work is F, they, the equation they use is F D cosine theta. Uh, but as I, the spring becomes uncompressed, the force decreases. So each increment, it will do less and less work. So let's say the maximum kinetic energy is going to be at zero right here. So let's just pick right there. Um, and then uh, right here, it's at zero. So I think it would be, I think it would be like this. That's just my, that's just my first guess. Uh, and then right here, there's a backwards pushing force on the block, so the work done would be uh, constant, and and so it should and decrease at a constant rate like this. Okay, the potential energy of the spring is U is one half K. Uh, x squared, they call it, I call it s squared. s is the amount that's compressed. So this would mean that as a function of this, it should be a parabola um, like this. So it's maximum compression up here, zero compression down there. So it's like this. And I think if you add these two together, so this is u, and this is k. If you add these two together, you should get some constant amount. If you Think of the spring and the mass as part of your system. There's no work done. It should be constant. So that's what that would be. I'm pretty happy with that. And then there's zero because zero, the spring's neither compressed nor... I assume, actually, contact with the uncompressed spring, push back, uh, compressing the spring, the block is released, the block is... Run. I assume it's no longer attached to the spring. It comes in contact. It doesn't say contacted, connected. Okay, that's that. That was easy. It'd have to be, right? Because if I get this far away, then the amount of energy stored in the springs me way more than it started with, and there's no way that could happen. Okay. Moving on to part B. The spring is now compressed twice as much, so delta x is 2d. A student is asked to predict whether the final position of the block will be twice as far at 60. The student reasons that since the spring will be compressed twice as much, the block will have more energy when it leaves, blah, blah, blah. B, which aspects of the student's reasoning, if any, are correct? Well, uh, the, the correct part is that uh, if delta x is 2d, uh, then more energy will be stored. It's more. So delta, so U would be more stored. 
Uh, and if there's more energy stored, then it will go farther because we think about this backwards pushing force from friction. You really shouldn't do work done by friction, but I, I'll, I'll allow it in this case. Um, that force in order to make it stop is gonna have to do move over a larger distance. So the other thing is that that's another assumption. This work equals negative friction force times, uh, let's call that, I, I guess x cosine theta, well, no, I've already done that, where x is the final value, I don't know. That, I don't really like the notation. Which aspect of the student's reasoning are incorrect? What's incorrect is that the energy stored in a spring is 1 half k s squared. So if you double this s, if I do, uh, let's say the first one, u is 1 half k d squared, u1. u2 is 1 half k 2d squared, and that's going to be 4 times 1 half k d squared, right? Because I have to square that too also. So I actually have more energy, but it's not twice as much. It's four times as much. Um, and so that's the, the wrong. It won't go twice as far. It'll go four times as far. Use the quantitative reasoning, including your value expression equations as needed. Develop an expression for the final position of the block. Okay, so let's just say in general, um, in terms of D. Okay, so we already did that. So if I say my system is my block plus spring, and that's important because if I do that, then there's no work done by the spring and so I'll have a change in potential energy. So the work on the system is zero. It's gonna be the change in kinetic plus change in potential energy. Um, it starts, oh no, there, the work is not zero. The work is gonna be equal to uh, the friction force, and they said that coefficient was mu. Yeah, so it's gonna be negative uh, mg mu x2, where x2 is the final distance. That's the work done. Because it only applies to the thing. So, and how do I get that? If you look at this block sliding on here, there's a gravitational force pulling down, down. There's a normal force pushing up, and then there's a backwards frictional force. That magnitude of that frictional force, F friction, is equal to the coefficient times the normal force. And since the it's not accelerating in the vertical direction, this plus that has to equal zero. So the normal force is mg. So that's how you get this mu mg right there. And then it went at distance x. Okay, so now over here for the change in kinetic energy, it starts and ends at rest. So both of those are zero. Zero minus zero plus. Now the initial potential, this is going to be the final potential, which is zero, minus the initial one-half k 2d squared equals negative mg mu x2. Did they give us some mass? They don't say the mass. Huh. Because it definitely depends on the mass. Um, so now I just want to solve this for x2 and I get x2 Oh, you know what? Uh, you know what? Hmm. I guess I can do it from the first case. Yeah. So let's just write this out. X2 is equal to uh, the negatives cancel. I get uh, K 4K D squared over mu M G. That's, that's delta, that's X2. Now let's look at the first case, right? Because we do know how far it went in that first case. So if I said the same thing, um, the exact same equation I know is true. I know uh, zero minus zero uh, plus zero minus one half k d squared equals the final position is, is d. So it's gonna be negative mu m g d. I know that's true. So let's just solve this for um, solve this for I feel like 
I want to get this as, in the same form. So I'm going to solve this for D, this D right here. I'm going to leave that D there. I know that seems dumb, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, okay, so if I do that, I get D equals K D squared over two mu M G. Now, over here, I had K D squared over mu M G is just D. You can't see that. That's what I had before. So if I use this whole thing, I get x2 is 4 times that. So this is going to be 4d. Nope, this is 3d. 3d. So that's going to be equal to uh, over 3. Okay, let's, that's true. And the other one I had was x2 equals 4 k d squared over mu m g. I want to find this, this term right here. What happened to my 2? I had a 2 over there too. Oh, I'm really messing this problem up. Okay. So if this term right over here is this term, so that's going to be equal to 3d. So x2 is going to be 4 times 3d. Yeah, that's it. Okay. I think that's right. Okay, so that's problem three. Again, not very, not as good as that first problem. The very problem number one I enjoyed. The number two and number three I didn't enjoy. But if you want to see the other solutions, they're down below in a playlist, and there's a link to the playlist down below.